Welcome to the fourth and final episode of Open Telemetry and the Future of Observability. Today, I would like to talk about a subject that's near and dear to my heart, instrumenting open source software. Over the years, I've written a variety of open source libraries and services, and inevitably, there comes the time when I would like to communicate to my end users what exactly the software that they are running is doing. Unfortunately, this turns out to be way more annoying than it should be. First of all, how do I communicate anything to my users? I don't know what logging, tracing, or metric system they are using. It's not like all the users got together and picked one solution. They all use different solutions. Inevitably, every open source library ends up implementing some kind of system of hooks and says, here, go write your own observability plugins. This can work sort of, but it's awkward for users who now have to configure a bunch of libraries and install a bunch of plugins just to enable observability. It also means that libraries can vary quite a bit in terms of what information they expose and how they expose it. But modern applications depend quite heavily on open source libraries. Frameworks, HTTP, database clients, message queues. Often, when we have a problem in our application, it is related to these libraries in some way. Not that the libraries have bugs necessarily, rather the way these libraries are consuming resources on our behalf. For example, our application code might be driving these libraries to do crazier and efficient things. These libraries might be configured in a way that causes them to thrash or consume too much memory. The performance profile of these libraries often defines the overall performance of our application. That means that the runtime characteristics of our software are just as important as correctness. As library maintainers, we don't want to just throw our hands up and say, here, you deal with observability, any more than we want to say, here, you write the tests. Instead, we want to think clearly about performance and resource consumption. We want to give our users a feedback mechanism for diagnosing performance issues, so they can tune their configurations or change the way their application leverages our software. In order to do this well, we need to take ownership of the telemetry that our libraries emit, especially if our libraries are sending or receiving network calls, juggling threads, or managing application code. In a world of distributed tracing, it's important that our libraries also manage, inject, and extract context propagation. Luckily, OpenTelemetry improves this situation by allowing libraries to ship with native instrumentation. Let's have a look at how this works. First, there's an important separation of concerns. As a library developer, we want to record our operations using traces, metrics, and logs. For standard operations, like handling HTTP requests, we want to use the OpenTelemetry semantic conventions. And for non-standard operations, which are specific to our library, we want to extend those semantic conventions with our own library-specific conventions. What we don't want to do is worry about what the user is doing with this data. They might be sending it to a variety of different backends. They might be doing nothing at all. The point is, it's none of our business. OpenTelemetry solves this issue by separating the instrumentation API from the rest of the client. At startup, the application registers their implementation of choice with the API. These registration points are called providers. There's a trace provider, a metrics provider, a logs provider, and so on. By default, a no-op provider is installed. This means if you instrument your library with OpenTelemetry, but the end user doesn't install anything, the API won't create any problems for your library. All of the API calls would just be no-ops. The OpenTelemetry project maintains a standard implementation for each provider, called the OpenTelemetry SDK. When the user installs the SDK, it gets registered as a provider, and all libraries containing instrumentation automatically start emitting telemetry. Assuming that every library has used OpenTelemetry to write instrumentation, the user doesn't have to go around configuring libraries to enable observability or installing any additional plugins. It just works automatically. In other words, every library manages its own instrumentation, but the user manages a single application-wide telemetry pipeline, and the two are glued together at application startup. I should note that while we do provide an SDK, the user also has the option of loading up a non-open telemetry provider, should they want to. The open telemetry API doesn't force the user 
into depending on our implementation. Now, if you're a library developer, you may have another concern when it comes to taking a dependency on the OpenTelemetry API, and that is dependency conflicts. So let's talk about compatibility guarantees. The OpenTelemetry project actually really cares about compatibility. Once we declare an API to be stable, we never break it. In fact, this is a pattern I would like to see practiced more widely in open source. Here's how it works. First, never break a stable package. Breaking is defined as any change which would cause a compilation or runtime error when one library upgrades to a new version of the package, but another library still depends on an older version. This is called a transitive dependency conflict. Two libraries point to incompatible versions of the same dependency. Obviously, what changes are allowed is language specific. In some languages, adding a new method to an interface is a breaking change. In other languages, it isn't. So what if you want to improve your API? If you do need to make a breaking change to an interface, don't mutate the existing interface. Instead, keep support for the current interface and create a new separate interface for the new version. Design the implementation so that it can support both versions. By the way, the same rule goes for plugin interfaces. If your library is a framework with an ecosystem of plugins, don't create a situation where all existing plugins suddenly break because you mutated the plugin interface. It doesn't matter if the new interface is better, your users have just been marooned on the old version of your framework until all the plugins they use get updated. Instead, create a new plugin interface while leaving the current interface untouched. This can often be implemented through a bridge or converter pattern, where internally the framework takes the plugins which implement the old interface and wraps them in an object that converts them to the new interface. This gives users and plugin maintainers a window of opportunity where they can upgrade without a loss of support. For example, when we created OpenTelemetry, we wanted to make improvements to the OpenTracing API but we still wanted to support open tracing users. So we created an open tracing bridge, which allows the SDK to implement both APIs. If you think of this as tracing API v1 and tracing API v2, you can see how this pattern works. Because open telemetry takes this approach to compatibility, it's possible for every library to depend on the latest 1.x version of the open telemetry API. This avoids dependency conflicts and allows for smooth upgrades. Okay, that's native instrumentation with OpenTelemetry in a nutshell. To finish up, I'd like to end with some personal thoughts on how I believe we should approach observability going forwards. When we write libraries, we tend to care quite a bit about tests, but I've noticed we don't give that same kind of attention to runtime observability. In the past, I felt like that's probably because it's so difficult to instrument our libraries properly. But now, with the availability of a cross-language platform like OpenTelemetry, it should be possible to give our end users a much richer experience when they use our libraries. All that said, here's my advice on how I believe we should approach instrumenting OSS. One, just write instrumentation. Don't create a system of plugins or lifecycle hooks just for the sake of observability. Instead, Use the OTEL APIs and instrument your library the same way you would when writing application code. It's just regular, ordinary code now. There's no need to take a weird or bespoke approach to instrumenting it. Two, don't wrap the OTEL API up in another API, or otherwise make it off by default. The OTEL API already contains a mechanism which allows users to plug in their implementation of choice, and the API defaults to a no-op if they aren't using observability at all. The difference is that with OTEL, that same implementation is automatically installed everywhere in all libraries using the OTEL API. This avoids a lot of hassle and ensures that tracing does not accidentally get broken. Three, trace any application code your library executes on behalf of the user. For example, if your library is a web framework, create a span for every controller action, rather than forcing the user to create these themselves. Often, libraries which handle networking will also need to inject and extract context from the requests they are making and receiving on behalf of the application. 
it is a much better experience for the user if the library handles all of this for them. 4. Otel provides tools for users to mute any noisy traces they are not interested in, so there's no need to provide tooling around this sort of thing. Again, the best experience is when everything is on by default, and the user automatically gets complete coverage of their application when they register the SDK for another provider. 5. Now that you know what telemetry your library emits, since you wrote it yourself, consider creating a playbook for your users. For example, think about providing advice on what kind of alerts users may want to set up by default, and how they should consider tuning your library based on the telemetry they are seeing in production. For example, if your library provides options such as batch size, number of workers, or anything else which changes the way resources are consumed, think about how the user should go about monitoring your library to see if these values should be adjusted. 6. Last but not least, consider getting involved in the OpenTelemetry community. If you're a maintainer of a large open source project that has a lot of implementations in a lot of different languages, consider talking to us about adding the semantic conventions for your library to the official OpenTelemetry semantic conventions. This will make them a lot more discoverable for backends and other people who want to consume your data. This concludes our series on open telemetry and the future of observability. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in diving even deeper, consider downloading a free copy of my O'Reilly report on the same subject. It's crammed full of information and also surprisingly short, kind of like me. Now, if you like this video, consider liking this video and also consider subscribing. Also, I'd really love to hear from you about how you thought this went and what kind of subjects you'd like to see me tackle in the future. So please leave a comment below. Thanks a bunch and catch you next time.